Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video we are going over my top 10 most overpowered Elden Ring weapons to break the upcoming DLC. Shadows of the Earth Tree is just a few weeks away from being released and a lot of you guys might be wondering, which weapon should I use to start my new adventure in Elden Ring? It is true that we will face something new and we will need to adapt to the fresh new mechanics that will come within the DLC, but it's better to be well prepared. That's why today I'm going to show you the best weapons, the most broken and insanely strong weapons you can find in this game. Besides of showing you the most optimal build for each one of them, allowing you to be more than ready to destroy whatever is waiting for you there. Don't forget that all the background gameplay of this video was recorded on New Game Plus 7, which is the max scaling of the game, max HP and max defense for all bosses, so you can expect better results if you are in a lower New Game cycle. First, in 10th place we have what I consider my very favorite weapon of the entire game. The Eleonora Spall Blade is a fantastic twin blade based on Dexterity and Arcane that features a really fast paced combat, so fast and fun that it truly feels like it came straight out of of Sekiro or an anime scene. The moveset of this weapon is quite amazing and its unique skill deals a huge amount of stance damage, allowing you to take control of every single scenario. What I love the most of this weapon is that you not depend completely on bleed procs, the attacks are so fast that you can use this monster effectively regardless of the enemy or boss you are facing. To obtain this weapon's max performance, use the following settings. We need the Eleonora Spall Blade on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main boss. I'm going to use the Ronin's armor set with the Iron Casa, mostly for style, so feel free to use any any other armor set you prefer. The best talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Roden Windsor Insignia. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic we are going to be using the Thorny Crack Tear and the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear. However, if you want to deal even more stance damage, you can use the Stone Barb Crack Tear too. This weapon devours stamina so be sure to craft some Pickle Torten Legs. To boost the power of this weapon we need 4 on Vigor and Endurance, 7 on Dexterity, 30 on Faith and 55 on Arcane. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs. Moving forward to the next place we have a legendary weapon that was very popular 2 years ago when Elden Ring was just released. The Reduvia High is a really high power that can be absolutely destructive if you use it under the right setup. This weapon deals physical damage only and builds up bleed so fast and has a very decent range despite of being a dagger. The insanely fast attack rate of the Reduvia allows the weapon to deal a ridiculous amount of damage to all type of enemies. Even the enemies that don't bleed are severely punished by this awesome dagger. We are going to use the Reduvia on plus 10, any weapon with Seppuku Ash of to trigger the bleed tools and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. I will use the Lord of Blood's robe just for style and to get a 10% of damage boost with each bleed proc I will use the White Mask. The most effective talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Lord of Blood's Exultation and the Roden Windsor Insignia. In our Physic Flask we will use the Thorny Crack Tear and the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tear, but the Green Spill Crystal Tear is a really good alternative for this one as well. With this weapon we will deal physical damage only, that's why the best body buff will be Blood aromatic, but if you don't like crafting you can use Hall of Shabriri perfectly fine. This weapon consumes a lot of stamina, so having some pickle torten legs is not a bad idea. The best stats for this one are Thorion Vigor and Thorion Endurance. We must level up the Dexterity to 60, Faith to 33 and Arcane to 80. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs. Before going to the next place we have a quick message from today's video sponsor. MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Now we have one of the strangest weapons of the game. The Death Spoker is a unique greatsword that looks more like a stick than a sword, but it deals way more damage than any of those things. This amazing weapon is truly a beast when it comes to deal a lot of damage quickly. It's really effective and powerful in almost every scenario, but it shines on finds where the target is huge and slow. There is only one weapon that can defeat Placidus Axe in New Game Plus 7 before it leaps and that's the Envoy's Longhorn. But it didn't make it to this list because that is its only useful scenario. In exchange we have the Ghost Flame Queen, that is extremely broken in all situations and it almost destroys Placidus Axe before it leaves. I have the feeling that Mesmer will be weak to Frostbite just like Rykard, Malenia or Radagon, so you might watch this weapon get in the spotlight in the future. We need the Dead Spoker on plus 10, I will use the Asur's Glintstone Staff to cast my spell faster and any seal will be good to cast our buffs. I'm going to use the Spellblade set because it will boost my magic skills damage by a total of 8%. The best Talismans for this one are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Magic Scorpion Charm and the All Lord's Talisman. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic we will use the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear and the Green Spill Crystal Tear. This weapon will be the bomb with 4 on Vigor and Endurance, 99 on Intelligence and 33 on Faith. Golden Vow, Hall of Shabriri and Terra Magica are going to be our main buffs. In 7th place the Blasphemous Blade shows up. I know what you are thinking and no I am not crazy nor delusional. The thing is that this beautiful and extremely powerful greatsword is not the best 
best weapon of the game. It's really good, it's here on the top 10, but the Blasphemous Blade doesn't deal as much damage as other weapons do. Indeed, it is surpassed by a lot of other weapons. But I feel like it won the 7th spot of this list cause its healing feature is actually broken and it makes it quite unique. This weapon makes you a real tank, an extremely strong tank. So I will define this Greatsword as the best weapon for casual players, with no offense. If you are not an experienced player, with this weapon you will become basically unkillable, so I understand why for a lot of players this weapon is the best. We are going to use the Blasphemous Blade on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. If you want, you can use the Commander's Standard as your aura buff. It is very useful in short fights. I am rocking the Drain Knight set with the Knight Helm to boost the fire style. The greatest talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Fire Scorpion Charm and the All Lord's Talisman. In our Physic Flask, the Flame Shouting Crackteer and the Fade Knot will be extremely powerful. If you want to conquer the DLC with this one, we need 4 on Vigor, 35 on Endurance, we must level up Strength to 66 and Fade to 80. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri will be our main buffs. Moving forward to the next spot, we have the Sword of Night and Flame, a real OG. This straight sword is the only weapon on the entire game that escapes from Intelligence and Fate at the same time, which means that you can create a well-balanced Magic Fire build, but it will be limited to a good performance. This weapon is an absolute monster when it's built prioritizing one single element at a time. The unique skill of the Sword of Night and Flame unlocks two main attacks, a strong fire wave and a stream of magic power similar to Comet Azur. You will have to build your character around which attack you want to use the most. The fire wave is more than decent, but the real thing here is the magic attack. If you really want to see the true potential of this weapon, I strongly recommend you to go with magic. However, that doesn't mean you can't have a little bit of fire to counter magic resistant targets or fire weak enemies. The build I made for this weapon allows you to get the best of both parts without falling in mid performance. We will use the Sword of Night and Flame on plus 10, we need any staff to cast Terra Magica and any seal to cast our main buffs. I will be using the Spellblade set, but feel free to choose any other armor set you like. The most effective talismans for this weapon are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the All Lord's Talisman and the Magic Scorpion Charm for the Comet Attack or the Fire Scorpion Charm for the Wave of Fire. The same principle applies for the Physic Flask. If we go with Magic, we use the Magic Shrouding Crackteer and the Stormbar Crackteer. If we choose Fire, we will use the Flame Shrouding Crackteer and the Fate Note. I recommend you to craft some Pickle Turtlenecks cause this weapon devours stamina. To get the most out of this weapon, we need Thorion Vigor, Thorion Mind, 37 on Endurance, we need to level up Intelligence to 99 and Fate to 40. Golden Vow, Halo Shavriri and Terra Magica will be our main buffs. Now we have the most hated katana in gaming history, and I am not exaggerating. The Rivers of Blood created such a huge controversy on the Elden Ring community that currently I still receive some ridiculous comments on my short videos where I am using this amazing katana. It seems like using this weapon is not approved by the most traditional and purest players of the Souls games. But leaving aside people with no brain, this weapon is truly a complete monster. It can destroy the toughest bosses of the game in seconds, and in the same way that the Eleonora Spot Blade, its fast attack rate and raw power makes it independent from the Bleed procs, which means that you can take this weapon to any scenario and it will perform incredibly good. Today, it managed to get into the top 5 of the best weapons of this game. We need the Rivers of Blood on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. I'm wearing the White Reed set with the Bandit Mask. I think it goes crazy with this build, but don't be afraid to use your favorite armor set. The best talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rodent Wings or Insignia. If you are missing one of these talismans, the Fire Scorpion Charm is a good alternative as well as the Lord of Blood's Exultation. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we will use the Thorny Crack Tear and the Flame Shouting Crack Tear. This weapon consumes a lot of stamina, so don't forget your Pickle Turtle Legs. To get the max performance of the Rivers of Blood, we need Forion Vigor, 35 on Endurance, we must level up Strength to 60, Faith to 33 and Arcane to 70. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri will be our main buffs. At this point, it's really hard to decide which spot a weapon should take as each one of the following monsters are absolutely insane. In fourth place, we have the Magma Blade, an extremely broken weapon that from Sover didn't want you to obtain. The drop rate of this weapon is so low that even with a lot of discovery, you might spend a lot of hours farming a single serpent to get one of these blades. But if you ask me, it is completely worth it. The Magma Blade is one of the few fire-based weapons on the game that will not struggle with fire-resistant targets. Indeed, it will destroy all of them even faster than other weapons. What I like the most of this weapon is that it doesn't rely on any status effects. It is purely physical and fire damage at a very fast rhythm, one of the coolest weapons I've tried in a Souls game. We are going to use the Magma Blade on plus 10 and any seal will be just fine to cast our buffs. If you want, you can use the Commander's Standard as an alternative aura buff, it doesn't last as long as Golden Bow, but it's a little bit better. I am using the Leather Armor set with the Leather Armor set recolor mod that you can find 
designed for free on Nexus mod, it is merely for aesthetical reasons. The greatest talismans for this monster are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rodan Windsor Insignia. Anyways, the Fire Scorpion Charm is a solid alternative if you are missing one of these talismans. In our Physic Flask, the Thorny Crack Tear and the Flame Shouting Crack Tear will be highly effective. However, if you want to gain control over the fights, the Stone Barb Crack Tear is a really good option too. This weapon doesn't consume a lot of stamina, so the green guys are very very optional this time. This weapon is not gonna work unless we use 40 on Vigor and Endurance, 66 on Strength and 80 on Fate. Golden Vow and Hell of Shabriri are the best buffs for this build. We have reached the top 3 and the bronze medal is for the Marais Executioner Sword, an incredible weapon with a very beautiful and unique design that reminds me a lot of Gale's sword when it wasn't broken, besides of having one of the best DPS of this game. This weapon is indeed really special and I can tell that a lot of players don't understand how this weapon works. The Marais Executioner Sword deals physical and magic damage, however it doesn't scale at all with intelligence, it will only scale with strength and arcane. The magic portion of the weapon can be boosted by the magic scorpion charm and the magic tear, but the most important part of the weapon is the multiple hits that we can deal with the unique skill Eochite's Dancing Blade. If you haven't tried this weapon, give it a try and you will notice that it is an actual beast. This is indeed the only weapon in Elden Ring capable of performing a legit one-shot on Malenia when using a one-shot build. We need the Marais Executioner Sword on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. Once again, if you want, the Commander's Standard can work as a great or a buff for short encounters. I'm broken the Briar set with the Traveler's Gloves to not exceed my equip load mostly, but these gloves are quite nice honestly. The most effective talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rodin Windsor Insignia. But if you are missing one of these monsters, the Gold Free Icon is an insanely strong option as well. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we will use the Thorny Crack Tear and the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear. In order to break the game with this one, we need 40 on Vigor and 25 on Endurance. We need to level up Strength to 80, Fate to 33 and Arcane to 60. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri will be our main buffs. Moving forward to the second place, the Silver Medal goes for the Dark Moon Greatsword, the most iconic From Software's weapon. A beautiful and powerful greatsword that has been covered in almost every From Software game under different names and small variations on the design. This crazy weapon is absolutely broken. I can't believe that even in New Game Plus 7 it takes those chunks of damage from the boss's HP bars. It's just too insane, it is almost a perfect weapon. It deals a lot of damage, it is really easy to use and it deals a lot of stance damage as well. And if all of that was not enough, it also bleeds of frostbite really quick. We are witnessing right now a complete demon of Elden Ring. My favorite part of this weapon is how cool it looks when using it, definitely one of my favorite choices. I will have to decide between this one and my Eleonora's Pole Blade to adventure myself into the DLC. We will use the Dark Moon Grazer on plus 10, I'm using the Azur's Glintstone staff but any staff will be good, we need the Jellyfish Shield to gain an extra damage boost and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. I will be rocking the Spellblade set again cause it will boost our damage by 8% if we wear the full set. The best and most broken talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Godfrey Icon and the Magic Scorpion Charm. In our Physic Flask, the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear and the Stone Barb Crack Tear will be an insane combo, but if you are looking for a good alternative that will be the Spike Crack Tear, but this one will take effect only if you are close enough to your target. This weapon devours stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Turtle Legs. To get the max performance of this weapon, we need 40 on Vigor and 35 on Endurance. We must level up Dexterity to 60, Intelligence to 60 and Fate to 33. Golden Vow, Hall of Shabriri and Terra Magica will be our main buffs. And as the most broken weapon you can find in Elden Ring, the best of the best, the winner of the gold medal, we have the Star Fist. I know guys, it's a little bit disappointing not seeing some sort of a very unique weapon here, but it turns out that this weapon has the fastest DPS of the entire game. It's just a little bit faster than the Marais Executioner Sword and the Darmon Greysword. I actually completed the game with all the weapons on this list and compared my best fights to see which ones were the fastest. And yep, the Darmon Greysword was too close to beat this one. But in the majority of scenarios of the late game, let's say Malenia, Raragon, Mog, Horalu, and Elden Beast, the Star Fist is just faster. Also, this weapon doesn't depend on the armor set or Terra Magica or Jellyfish Shield, it's just raw strength going wild at a very fast rhythm. The Star Fist is not even close to be my favorite, but dang it, it's the absolute king, bro. We need the Star Fist on plus 25 with the Crack Blade Ash of War on the Heavy Affinity and any seal will be fine to cast our buffs. If you want, you can use the Commander's Standard as your Aura buff, cause with this weapon, almost every fight is going to be short. I'm wearing the Rodent Dwelly set with the Black Bolt Mask to keep this wild style I like to see on this build. That's why I named it the Psycho Fighter. The most effective talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Axe Talisman, the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we will use the Thorny Crack Tear and the Spike Crack Tear. Believe me guys, this combo is nasty. 
safety. This weapon deals physical damage only, for that reason Blood Bowl Aromatic is the best body buff for this build. But if for some reason you can't use this item, feel free to use Howl of Shabriri, the difference is not that important. You can craft some Pickle Turtle legs for this build, but you will defeat your target before running out of stamina. This is also one of the most optimal builds on Elden Ring, with 50 points on Vigor and Endurance, 99 on the Strength and 33 on Faith. Golden Vow and Howl of Shabriri are going to be our main boss. With all these weapons you are more than ready to start the DLC as strong as possible. Let me know in the comment section which other weapon should be on this list and I will make a second part. I hope you have enjoyed this video, if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day guys, my name is Carlos and I will see you in the next one.